Government agency Felcra used up half a billion ringgit earmarked for paying out cost-of-living aid to its participants on its Munara Felcra project in Kuala Lumpur. Deputy Economic Affairs Minister Mohamed Ratsi Mohamed Jidin told the Dewan Rakyat today that it wasn't Felcra's original goal to develop a tower. He says one reason why the agency is financially constrained is because the monies had to be rerouted to the skyscraper project on Jalan Samara. Felcra's cost of living aid is a loan to participants. The funds are obtained from two sources borrowings from Felcra's internal funds and monies sourced from savings of participants obtained from the Replantation Fund, RISDA Replantation Aid and assistance from the Malaysian Palm Oil Board. As of August 2018, Felcra had temporarily suspended assistance utilising its internal funds. A developer for the 43 billion ringgit Malacca Gateway Integrated Deep Sea Port Project has filed a judicial review against Putrajaya's decision to cancel its operating license and demanding at least 139 billion ringgit in damages. The license was granted to KAJ Development by the previous BN government last March. However, that license was cancelled last October. KAJ Development said it appealed the move but did not receive any response from the Transport Ministry. It is now seeking a review of the decision and also an order to quash the cancellation of the operating licence. Alternatively, it is seeking an order to compel Transport Minister Anthony Lok to respond to its appeal within 14 days of the court order. Aside from the 139 billion ringgit in special damages, it is also seeking general damages to be assessed by the court. The court has fixed April 24th for the possible hearing of leave. The Malacca Gateway project spans 1,504.9 hectares and comprises three man-made islands and one natural island. To be completed in 2025, it was envisioned to be the largest private marina in Southeast Asia. The Federal Court has fixed Thursday to hear the review application filed by Datuk Sri Najib Raza on the Apex Court's decision to lift the stay on his SRC international trial. This leaves the big question of whether the trial will actually proceed tomorrow. The former PM is facing abuse of power, criminal breach of trust and money laundering charges involving 42 million ringgit of SRC's funds. When contacted, criminal lawyer Rafiq Rashid Ali told The Edge that he believes the defence team, led by senior lawyer Tan Sri Shafi Abdullah, will argue that the trial can be delayed at least for a day or two, given that the review will be heard the very next day, together with four interlocutory appeals. Regardless, the presiding judge will have the full discretion whether or not to go ahead with the trial, since the federal court has already decided that the trial can commence tomorrow. AirAsia's website, airasia.com, will be set up as a separate company within weeks to monetize the budget airline's technology assets. AirAsia Group Executive Director and Group CEO Tan Sri Tony Fernandez said via Twitter today that he was tired of analysts treating the AirAsia Group as merely an airline stock when it has huge tech assets. He says he expects AirAsia.com to be as big if not bigger than other online travel agencies including Traveloka. In a series of tweets, he said AirAsia.com, which will be ASEAN-based, will be comparable to its rivals, with all AirAsia airlines making good profits and providing huge data. PM Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad has confirmed that the cabinet actually hasn't decided if Linus Corp must send back the waste generated from its plant in Gaping Kuantan to Australia. He says the cabinet will meet soon to make that final, official decision after a public clash of opinions over the management of the plant by-product. In a surprising turn of events, Entrepreneur Development Minister Dato Sri Mohammad Retswan Mohammad Yusof lambasted his colleague Yobi Yin yesterday. After the Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change Minister attempted to compel Linus to ship out 450,000 tonnes of waste created in the processing of rare earths from the company's Mount Weld mine in Western Australia. 
He said Yeo's stand was not one that was endorsed by the cabinet and that she has to take responsibility for her statement on the matter. He added that Linus's investment in Malaysia is too big to ignore and that the cabinet is not supposed to force the company to export its waste unless the byproduct is deemed very unsafe.